Maria Ulig liwatan inaya Maru Tulungan wak Idalan wak Ya unar Betawen Say dayu Jat muntu i palapak U Maria ulik liwa Tan inaya maru Tulungan makidalan wak Ya unara petawa no other woman has influenced the world more than her. She is venerated by the multitudes from the different parts of the globe, by different races, by people from all walks of life. She is none other than the Mother of God, the Holy Virgin Mary. The Blessed Mother manifests her will in apparitions, changing not only the beholder and believer, but transforming towns, nations, and even the course of history. In the northern part of the Philippines, a bustling pilgrimage destination grew from a barren dry land. Manawag, as the site is now known, was once a quaint little village. It is a town that literally sprung from the religious faith of its people and the devotees that came from across the country and the globe. As an undying legend is told every time the name of the town is spoken, Manawag. And this is the beginning. It is said that one day, a farmer walking home heard a mysterious voice. Ano? Ano? He looked around and with great awe saw the radiant lady with a rosary in her right hand and a child on her left standing on a cloud shrouding a treetop. of the apparition. Not long after, on the same spot where the lady appeared, a church was built on a hill overlooking the river. A town quickly flourished around it, and it was called Manawang. So if they would ask you, where are you going? I'm going to the place of the Virgin Mary who calls, the Virgin who is calling. And in the uh, local language, well, roughly it could be uh, translated as Unlaag di madlugar ya kloay berhin ya mantatawag. In Filipino, uh, I'm uh, pupunta ako doon sa lugar ng berhin na tumatawag. And where did you come from? Well, I came from the place of the Virgin who calls. So as time went on, you see the place got its name really from this description. So eventually, our town was called Manawag. The building of the Shrine of Our Lady of the Rosary in Manawag is traced to this apparition. The present site of the shrine is deemed the most appropriate. Other locations were met with obstacles that prevented the construction of a fitting edifice for the Mother of Jesus. 
manifestations proving that where the church now stands is a divine choice. To the townsfolk, that holy instruction once heeded brought protection and guidance to the village. The Christian mission in Manawa was established by the Augustinians at the end of 1600. It is one of the earliest missions in the Philippines, and it faced the ordeals of converting pagans and attacks of the hostile natives. In 1608, when the Augustinians were withdrawing to the other parts of Pangasinan, the Dominican Order took over the mission in Manawa. The work of the Dominican Fathers made us strong, that made us to be really uh, devoted to the Blessed Mother. During the time of these Dominican Fathers, the early ones, especially the Spaniards, uh, they conduct a, a Sunday school wherein we are, uh, the people are, I mean, say the children are taught catechism. So we come to the church at two o'clock to learn the, the basic prayers and to, to learn the basic faith. And so maybe it was there you see that something you see uh, was rooted in uh, deep in our hearts. The town is now almost 400 years old and a first-class municipality. The people grow rice and sugarcane as their primary livelihood. Various handicraft making is also a supporting industry. During Saturdays, Sundays, and heavy pilgrimage days, the Manawag church and immediate surroundings transform into a festive sight. Stores and vendors selling crafts, delicacies, and religious items welcome domestic and foreign pilgrims. It is not these trimmings that attract the ever-growing record number of pilgrims to Manawa. The popularity of the Shrine to the Lady of Manawa is traced to a sincere devotion and the characteristic of the people of the once completely pastoral town near a river. Through the centuries, numerous accounts of blessings have spread far and wide attesting to the benevolence of the Virgin towards her people of faith. And miracles continue to happen. Naalala ko pa nun yung position ko sa pagdadasal, kaharap na kaharap ko yung si Mother Mary of Manawag. Nandun ako, tapos parang nakatingin siya sa akin na parang kinakabahan ako, totoong matong nararamdaman ko. Grabe, parang nagkakatotoo yata yung sinasabi niya na one way or another, you will feel something na kung talagang taimtim kang nagdadasal at taimtim kang taimtim mo sinasabi sa kanya yung problema mo, wala naman po ako hinihingi eh. Nakikipag-usap lang ako. Pag inisip ko, ano ba yung, ano ba yung pilgrimage? Ano ba hinahanap ng mga tao? Maaring pagtinignan mo, iba-iba ang reason ng pagpunta ng mga tao. May nangangailangan, may humingi ng blessing, may siguro kapayapaan ng kalooban, forgiveness. They might be expressed in different ways. But you can also express it in one way. They want to have an experience of God. It is a religious experience that people are looking for. And we would like to experience God according to our state of life, yung condition natin. So sa oras ng pangangailangan, you want to experience God in that context. Sa oras ng biyaya, andun pa rin yung Diyos. Tay dayo mo, o Maria, Diyad mundo ipalapag. O Maria, ulig liwa, tan inaya mo. You know, coming to Manawa, every time I come there and, and, and put myself in front of the Blessed Mother, you feel like you're home. See, Ina is embracing you without conditions. Parang, you're here, I'm happy you're here. No questions asked about, oh, ano nangyari sa'yo, oh, it's scolding, nothing of that sort. It's always a, a feeling of a unconditional love of a mother who is just happy to see a child. Never was it known that anyone who fled the protection, implored the help, or sought the intercession was left unaided. 
And as inspired by this conference, I fly into you, O oh Virgin of Virgins, my mother. Holy Week, Christmas, birthday mo, birthday ng nanay ko, ng tatay ko, ng lolo ko, lola ko. We go there as a family, buong family. At pag may bagong anything, bagong kotse, bagong ano, parang malaking parte ng buhay. Ibibigay mo muna sa kanya bago ang lahat. The Shrine of Our Lady of Manawag and her town of patronage have long been intertwined. If the farmer in the first apparition heeded the call of the Virgin, in return, the Holy Mother answered the prayers of her believers. Tradition validates the relationship of the people with their patroness. A portion of the plaque from the Historical Research and Markers Commission declares that the Church of Manawag has been administered by the Dominicans since 1605. The first church made of wood lasted a century. The second construction of stone donated by Gaspar de Gamboa and Agatha Yanta was destroyed in the earthquake of 1892. A temporary church again built of wood was burned down during the insurrection of 1898. The image of Our Lady was spirited away and preserved during the revolution. It was taken back to the Manawag Sanctuary, where it was solemnly crowned on April 21, 1926, in the presence of thousands of devotees. Murals on the walls of the church depict unforgettable events in the history of the town. One shows the bringing back to life of a dead boy brought before the feet of Our Lady. It is said that Our Lady of the Rosary saved Pangasinan and other northern provinces from the locust attack of 1698. Folks have retold of the days during which they tried to protect the rice fields from swarms of locusts that came darkening the sky. They finally sought for the Lady's help. After a procession, when they laid her image down in the midst of the devastation, the locusts began to destroy each other, and the land and sky were cleared of the pests. The ladies' rain miracles manifested in the drought of 1706 Accounts during that year's summer season describe cracked grounds and vegetation drying under a cloudless sky. For months, the people of Manawag hopefully waited for rain. They called on their last recourse, the Lady of Manawag. She demonstrated her great compassion once again. There was no rain. All the fields were dry. People come to the Blessed Mother and then the Blessed Mother would be taken around the town for procession uh, to ask her intercession so that the fields will be filled with water again, with the rainwater again. And so, you see, it, uh, our folks said, you see, that before the procession enters the, uh, back to the church, other miraculous events were ascribed to the Holy Mother during World War II. Survivors recount their experiences. When the American bombers came, the Japanese sought cover inside our church. Yung mga hapon, dala-dala nilang mga, mga horses, kabayo nila, hindi nila maipapasok sa simbahan kasi ayaw kung talagang hindi papayag siguro ang mother na, na 
mapapasok ang mga hall sa, sa simbahan, magkakasakit o kaya talagang hindi magkakapasok. The American bombers attacked the church. Three bombs did not explode. Hindi pumutok. Kaya yun ang milagro. The new church where the Lady of Manawag stands today is an evolution of more than two centuries of construction and reconstruction. The religious Christian art in the Philippines is very, very distinct, I think, to the Philippine setting. So imagine, even with their very, very difficult environment at the time in the Philippines, they were able to put up all these magnificent churches. You see there, the most beautiful, even though they had to adapt to the environment to secure these churches, they were able to put some aesthetic elements so that it will always be a reminder of the people that these are the best expressions that we can have from their stones to their wood to uh, their paintings. It's all there. You know? And the materials had always been around their, their environs. It's incredible how how they built the church in terms of the manpower involved. The walls for the transept were planned to be three meters thick. At that time, wala pa tayo mga kabilya, no? You needed foundations at least 10 meters deep to support the, those walls. So all that earth was thrown at the back of the church. It's now smooth to walk on, but we, you can imagine it was uh, rugged before. No? So all that space was filled up by the excavation at earth. The work was slow, but everybody was pitching in. Uh, the priest says that you would even see um, young ladies from the elite going up the hill with the little baskets of sand and stone. As far as the church bells are concerned, we, the uh, belfry actually contains uh, one vi a very big bell and then uh, several other smaller bells. And these are... Uh, rang in combination or sometimes the big bell is uh, rang only uh, uh, solo. When somebody is dying, I would uh, clearly remember that they would say tulong and the sound is something like uh, tang, 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 tang. It's like a pleading for, for, uh, for prayer. Uh, so once you hear that, any time during the day, it means you have to pray for somebody who is dying. We also have the, ang uh, the Angelus at 12 o'clock, uh, 12 o'clock noon and 6 o'clock in the evening, of course. And this one is, uh, is done with uh, 12 rings of the, the, of the big bell. And this is uh, something that... Uh, be expected every day in Manawag and it, it, it's part of the town, uh, town people's uh, routine to hear the bell uh, for the Angelus. And then we have perhaps the most beautiful uh, ringing uh, which happens daily and this one would be the Animas. I remember they, call, they would call it Animas and this would be uh, actually uh, Latin for souls. This would be the eight o'clock ringing of the bells and this is the most beautiful because uh, it's a combination of the small bells. The work of improving the church and convent never ceases. Improvements in the church complex are undertaken to add facilities for the comfort of thousands of pilgrims who arrive in droves in the sanctuary all year round, but especially very heavy during the Holy Week and days of feasts. The setting of the church is very important, which adds up really to the beauty of the place of Manawag. You know, this is one of the few churches that's on top of a hill. No? When you look at the setting, uh, it ha you, you go up, the church is right in front of you, uh, very, very strong in presence uh, with all the towns gathered. And uh, I noticed that you have, uh, I think, two or three main streets 
that point towards towards the the church. So there's some sort this church not just in terms of position it commands, no, but it forces people really to relate to it because of the structure and layout of the whole town. Kasi ang simbahan naman kasi eh, hindi naman dapat ginawa sa bato. Kasi pag bato yan, matigas yan eh. Ang simbahan ay gawa sa puso ng mga tao. Ano? Kaya we are promoting eh, community. And kaya nga ang mahalaga dito, actually, since I'm the parish priest, ano, eh, uh, ang nasasakupan ko is not the shrine, but the whole uh, community of Manawag. So we are promoting and actually dito renewing and uh, actually strengthening the basic ecclesial community. We have about 30 basic ecclesial communities around, uh, around this uh, parish. Ano, sa mga barrio yon. So we are strengthening them and uh, building, ang kinuha natin dito is simula mo natin na yung human relationship. Ano, kasi mahalaga dito yung relasyon. The Manawag Convent is not only the residence of the Dominican community, it also serves as the formation house of the novices of the Dominican province of the Philippines. These aspirants for the priesthood are molded during their novitiate life to carry on the legacy of St. Dominic. A unique and timely pastoral service of the Manawag Parish is the radio information service of Radio Dominico, 102.3 FM. This station of Manawag Dominicans inspires listeners to live the Word of God, exemplified by the Blessed Virgin Mary. The relics and mementos in the Church Museum are proofs of the answered prayers to the Virgin of Manawag. Documents of the first-hand accounts of the miracles abound and are never-ending. The museum basically is a collection of the many attires no, of, of the Virgin. Uh, there's a lot that we can do about the museum in Manawag, no? not just to tell the narrative of the miracles, of the, uh, the arrival of the Dominicans in that area, but more so, I think the highlight would be why this particular attire at a particular occasion, why this particular color of this particular attire, why this, why this type of symbolisms on the attire of the Virgin, because that in itself is a very, very long story and that will be a big interest to the people. I never really thought that I would ko yung pagdadasal ko. Na ah, ang pagdadasal pala, pakikipag-usap, pakikipag-communicate. Hindi lang pagsasabi nitong mga words na nababasa mo sa, sa booklet, kundi dahil, kundi dapat yung nasa loob mo, yung nasa puso mo, dapat galing talaga siya sa sarili mo, hindi yung inuutos ng ibang tao. Tay dayo mo, o Maria, dyan mundo ipalapag. O Maria, o ligliwa, tan inaya maaro. Tulungan mag, idalan mag, yaunarap ketawin. Sometime in 1989, you know, I, I, I was talking to some friends. I was assigning Ordinetta Pangasin and then Divine Word College. I go, I like to do a little walk, a walk of thanksgiving, a walk of sacrifice from Ordinetta to Manawa. That's about 13 kilometers. And so some friends said, yeah, we'll join you. So about the first walk with God, we call it Walk with God to Manawa. The first one happened in the October of 1989. 100 people walking and then uh, ending with a mass. 
Misa de Gracia, we call it that. It's a three and a half hour walk. Okay, so every first Saturday of May and every first Saturday of October. Now, as the years went by, people kept joining and joining and joining. And the last time I had a walk with God, there are about 7,000 people now walking with me from all over the Philippines now. Not only from Ordinata, but it has become some kind of an event when people they have no agenda except to say thank you to Mama Mary or to ask something from Mama Mary. It's a petition walk and also a Thanksgiving walk, ending always with the Mass at this shrine. Bumababa si Mama Mary dyan sa truno niya, nagdi-disguise daw. Alam na alam na nila kung bumababa. Nalalaman nila kasi pagdating maraming damo yung kumakapit sa damit niya. Nagpunta sa paningki, parang namamalimus. Yung sabi niya raw doon sa nagtitinda. Alin ka, sundan mo ako para makita mo kung saan ako. Yung naman nagbigay daw sinundan mo. Nakita nila dito para pumasok dito sa loob ng simbahan. Yun ang kwento ng mga matatanda na narinig ko, yung yanan ko. The different faces of Mary is what serves as what would make the other person be healed or that will give more faith for this person. Mary doesn't have just one figura ng mukha. He just doesn't have one face. She's the Miss Universe, she's the Miss World, she's the Miss International, she's the Nana, she's the Aling Maria. She's, she's everything because Mary is there for everyone who needs her. Whatever form of need that we want from her, she would represent her. She would give herself to us the way we would want her to become in our life. You cannot compare. Hindi mo makumpare yung mukha niya sa kahit ng magandang babae. Ayan. Kahit sinong babae, hindi mo makumpare ang, ano, ang etsura ni Mama Mary. Kasi, ano yun eh, ang, ang refleksyon, ang mga makikita mo sa kanya, iba eh, iba, iba ang makikita mo na walang, wala dito sa mundo. One ceremony which also commemorates the countless grace the town receives from the Virgin is the dawn procession on every first Saturday of the month. Here, churchgoers follow an image of Our Lady of Manawag in the streets in a symbolic walk with only candles to light their way before the sun rises. After the procession during October and during the fiesta this April, there is a procession of the Blessed Virgin Mama Mary and so plenty of people from all walks of life and they wait for the Mama Mary to be enthroned again. After the procession, my consecration, no consecration of Mama Mary, after that, the Mama Mary will be brought to the altar. Makikita mo kasi yung ano eh, uh, slowly, slowly, slowly na tumataas, nakupo. Ayun, ang pinakamaganda sa lahat. Pag makikita mo ang Mama Mary na kuma, na nasaan na andoon na, naku, maraming umiiyak talaga. The devotion to the Holy Mother is so strong that pilgrims come to visit her and request that Masses be said for them. Candle offerings burn with the fervor of deep prayers in the galleries. Actually, ang routine ko doon, bibili ako ng madaming candles. Uh, three candles, each for, ano, parang, three candles for my family. Kasi parang, I love you yun. <laughs> Ibig sabihin nun. Three candles for the country, three candles for my friends, and three candles for my co-workers and my project. According to those who venerate the Virgin, her image in the pedestal has an amiable, radiant expression. Her face inspires love, adoration, and awe. She exudes beauty beyond description. The ivory face has a mystifying, lovely expression, as she is the patroness of the sick, protectress of the helpless, 
benefactress of the needy, and a litany of honorific titles, her beauty is more perceived by the heart. Marami po siyang natulong, natulong dito, lalo na po sa kalamidad na nagdaan nung unang, unang pangbagyo. Ang barangay namin, Baritao. Sabi po ng ilog yun. Nung bumagyo po yung unang dading niya tayo, dading, lumaki po yung ilog. Tinulungan pa sila ni Mama Mary. Hawa ng Diyos po yung baritaw na yun. Wala pong namatay. But the profound beauty of Our Lady of the Rosary is that she always reminds her devotees that she should be loved as a mediatrix, an intercessor between Christ and humanity. For some, looking closely at Our Lady of Manawag, they seem to see that her hands extending the baby Jesus forward urges the priority for Christ. The handkerchief is a very small thing, but very useful, you know? When you're perspiring, when you cry, when you have colds, we Filipinos, when you're embarrassed or shy, you have the handkerchief. Very small, very useful. But where is it most of the time? It's just in the pocket. It's hidden. Nobody sees it. What is the opposite of the handkerchief? Anong tawag niya sa Korea na lalaki? Koreano, right? Anong tawag sa Korea na babae? Koreana. Anong tawag sa Korea na bata? Korbata. <laughs> this is the opposite of the handkerchief, the necktie. Look at the necktie, front page, starting kitang kita na lahat. But you ask yourself, what's the use of that necktie, really? Not much. Pang display, pang forma, pang japorms. Wala naman nagagawa. And I urge people many times, be ye like handkerchief. Simple, hidden, quiet, but doing God's will with so much love. And I always pay tribute to the handkerchief of all times. That's Mama Mary. She was so hidden, quiet, but doing God's will with so much love. So one time I was in one little province, Quezon, sa Aurora. Pagkatapos sa eh, beauty contest, may mga candidates, may mga five nine, may mga puti, may mga flawless. Meron isang girl, mga five four, five three. Ang nanay niya ay ta. Ang tuhod niya ay ma maitim. Ang ilong niya ay pango. Pag tinignan mo, binubusan ng mga tao, ito mga kababaryo. So, Nag-declaim siya, sabi niya, maliit pa ako, ang parents ko, lahat ng suporta binibigay sa akin. Mahirap lang kami, pero lahat ng pangarap ko, lahat pinag-aral ako ng magulang ko. Ngayong ako ay magsasali sa beauty contest, hindi nila ako sinusuporta dahil ako daw ay pango. Sabi niya, ano naman ay kahihiya ko kung ang aking skin ay brown. Father God never gave this to me as a punishment. Hindi ito parusa sa akin para ako maging brown at pango at para hindi ako sumali sa beauty contest. Yung mga tao, when she was saying her piece, tumahimik ang barrio. This girl is going to be the representative. So sabi ko, thousand faces of Mary, why can't I get a beauty queen looking like her? Put the crown on her head. Say dayo mo, O Maria, Diyad mundo ipalapag O Maria, o ligliwa Tan inaya maaro Tulungan mag idalan mag Yaon na rapat tawin The faithful have journeyed to the sacred place even centuries ago. The reasons are varied. Many seek divine help at times of distress, while some undertake the long travel as penance. They vow to make other visits once their prayers are answered. To visit the shrine of the Holy Mother of the Rosary is a life-defining experience for many. The devotion in return has various spiritual and physical beneficial effects as well. That's what the pilgrimage is all about. Going to people's heart and going to your own heart. So we're not talking so much about distance. We're talking about a relationship. And that's how we should look at our pilgrimages. And the journey comes to end someday just when it's not for us to see 
What matters is not the miles behind, but the smiles, the care, and the time. Go slow, you're always on the go. Where to you often do not know. The journey is not about going far and fast. The journey is going to the heart. For many people, for many Christians, number one, they like to see something tangible in their faith, something that you can touch so that our faith can reach some place. Now, images of the saints or images of Christ or images of the Blessed Virgin Mary are giving us that beautiful occasion of having near our hands what we believe and we take in our minds. And that is why these beautiful dreams take people from time to time to some place to see the image of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The image of Mama Mary is a symbol of Bukod po sa kagandahan, kalinisan po ng puso, tapos yung sakripisyo na ginawa niya para dun sa anak niya. Yung parang gano'n po, yung parang lahat gagawin niya para maging maayos lang yung lahat. Kaya po pag pumunta ka, yung po yung sinasabi namin na mahirap ipaliwanag. Hindi po siya kaya ipaliwanag eh, basta nararamdaman lang po siya sa puso. Pero pipilitin mo rin lagi na taon-taon bumalik, once na subukan mo. Opo, parang gusto mo siya parating pumunta. Pagka once na nakapunta ka, parang gusto mo Balik every na. year yung ganong time nando dun ka, parang ganun. Para, para naman kasi sa akin, uh, sinasama ko yung mga bata dun. Siyempre, ang bata, hindi naman, hindi naman agad yan kilala kung ano yung ginagawa nila eh. Hindi nila alam kung ano yung ginagawa nila. Ang gusto ko, makasanayan nila para paglaki nila. Kung yeah. nila mararamdaman okay. kung gano ka importante. We used to come here when I was a little girl, but then again, I've, I've been away for almost yeah, 20, 20 years now, and it's just overwhelming, and, and uh, it, it's, um, it's a wonderful experience to come back and visit the lady again after that many years of absence. As my mom said, I, I felt very overwhelmed, because um, but um, I don't really know the, 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 the background story of this place, but um, this, this shrine makes me want to do some more research on the background. As a Balikbayan, okay, we really feel uh, honored and uh, blessed that uh, we're here, we're visiting Our Lady of Manawag, and uh, uh, we're going to go back to the States feeling um, more fulfilled, more um, blessed. Uh, more blessed, of course. And we hope that, uh, especially in the coming new year, right, uh, we hope that we'll be uh, uh, more progressive, uh, we'll be more successful in our lives, and uh, of course, uh, we'll feel more closer to the Lord uh, because of this, uh, because of this visit to Our Lady. I think eldest brother ko, musta, pamangin ko, then eto yung dad ko, sakit. Eto naman yung sister ko. Hello. Then another sister ko. Mother ko. Hello, mahalad din him. Brother in ko, pamangin ko, at isang pamangin ko. Brother in ko, I think. Another brother. I'm from Olongo Po City. And uh, parati ako nagpupunta rito sa Manawag every year. Uh, hindi ako nangangako, but uh, I make it a point to go here uh, once a year or twice a year. Uh, uh, Diboto ako ng uh, Manawag, pero hindi ako yung talagang uh, consistent na nangangako na every year. Kasi mahirap mga ako, but I really do believe that uh, ang daming nitulog niya sa akin. Wherever I am, uh, dinadala ko yun. Tapos dinadala ko rin, meron din ako sa sakyan. Kaya wherever I go, parating na sa akin ng Manawag. Nung nagkasakit yung anak ko na niofer ko na kay Mama Mary dahil alam ko na na sabi nila mamamatay, tinanggap ko na sabi ko sa kanila, sa kay Mama Mary, buong puso ko nang ibibigay dahil nakasalalay sa inyo ang buhay niya. Pero kung ito naman ang hingin ko po, Mama Mary, sa inyo, na dugtungan nyo ang buhay niya. Kaya hanggang ngayon po ay 
magiging fortified na is buhay na buhay pa rin. Yun po ang primerong parang granted na granted na hiling ko yung nabuhay yung anak ko. More than 20 years, if I may say, could be 20 to 30 years, I've been into that kind of devotion that I, I never feel tired of saying that I've been there for many years, for almost every month. Every first Sunday of the month, I try to make it a point that really visit her. The, the joy of really going to the Blessed Mother, going to the Lady of Manawag, is such that you cannot express it. Saida yumu o Maria, jad mundo ipalapag o Maria uligliwa. Tan inaya maro, tulungan makidalan mak yaunarap etawen. Unless and until your love for the Blessed Mother is really that simple. Almost, almost a hopeless situation. You just mama hawak lang po sa inyo. Then you're missing a lot. We approach the Blessed Mother not so much in terms of doctrines or intellect, but with the heart. I mean, you're there. Uh, mama Mary is there, and she just welcomes you. And when you leave, she knows. She's telling you again, "Anaki, take care. Huh? Don't forget your mission. Be good." When we're coming back from. Uh... The, the church, uh, Lady Manawag, uh, we have a good bonding, we talk a lot, we joke a lot, and uh, we the family is closer together. Parang offer ko, parang pagpasalamat ako to Our Lady of Manawag. Uh, yun na naisip namin bigla na ano kaya kung gagawin tayo ng medical mission, it's, that's a very nice, ano, because sometimes you want to spend money, hindi mo alam kung saan na pupunta eh. But, in this kind of medical dental mission, nakikita mo eh. Mga tao talaga napapasalamat sila. Ito sasakyan na to, pang-anim na to. Um, yung previous kong mga sasakyan, lahat ko sinasabi na pag ipapabless ko sa manawag. But unfortunately, lahat na wala yun kasi hindi ko tinupad. Basta ang alam ko kasi, once na sa pagbabiyahe daw ang bayat manawag, eh, Our Lady of God Boyards daw eh. So parang feeling ko pag dito, um, safe, Alam mo ba, biyay ka ng safe. Ayun, mag-guide ka niya. Ang tama. Parang yung pagpagod ka, nakapagpahinga ka, yung nawawala yung pagod mo. Tapos parang yung ibang worries mo nawawala. Ganun gumagaan yung pakaramdam. Parang meron kang assurance na someone will take care ng lahat ng worries mo sa buhay. Sarap ng pakiramdam kasi pag nandito eh. Iba yung feeling, parang ang galing ka sa malayo tapos makakarating ka dito, ang haba ng pila, ang daming tao. Ang sarap ng feeling pag nakakarating ka dito. Iba yun at iba talaga yung pakiramdam. Kunwara, yun nga po, um, bagsak na bagsak ka na, marami kang problema. Yung wala na pong maisip na dahilan kung ano man yung solusyon dun sa problema yun. Parang ang sasabihin lang sa'yo ng magulang mo, ng mga yung mga taong nakakatanda, magtiwala lang tayo sa Diyos kay Mama Mary, yung ganyan. Yung, ako po hindi talaga ako nawawalan ng lakas ng loob, hindi talaga ako napanghihinaan kasi talagang <clears throat> kay God, kay Mama Mary, sa kanila po ako, sa family ko po ako kumukuha ng lakas. Ganun, kumbaga iniisip ko nandyan sila sa akin, nasa tabi ko lang sila. The ascent, the approach to the church is grand, you know, you, you go up, you know, and very, very uh, reflective of the way we look at our approach to heaven, you know, that you go up and that is really a, a ritualistic uh, gesture. You know? Through Mary, I was able to recognize better, more, or appreciate more um, Jesus Christ because after all the miracles that Mary would display in this world, you know, the lefts and rights and all the manifestations of people who have experienced her blessings, I felt it's most, it's timely to give honor to the one who remarkably made more miracles to us and he will make more miracles to each and every one of us the way he gave miracles, made miracles on Mary from the time 
of her immaculate conception, even beyond that, and way after her assumption to heaven. So after learning about Mary, it was really more fitting to give more honor to the one who's in charge of it all. Um, naniniwala ako na one way or another, babalik at babalik tayo sa Panginoon. Sa mga oras na walang nakikinig sa'yo, sila lang talaga yung pwede mong lapitan at kahit ang lugar ka, kahit anong oras mo gusto silang kausapin, nandyan lang sila, makikinig lang sila sa'yo. Hindi mo nga lang makukuha agad-agad yung sagot na gusto mo kasi itinetest din nila yung patience mo sa buhay, patience mo sa pakikisama sa mga tao, at saka kung hanggang saan mo kakayaning dalahin yung problema mo. Sa akin, sa paniniwala ko sa buong buhay ko po na bilang tao at bilang devotee ng Our Lady of Manawag, it really pays to pray hard and to say thank you every day for the blessings. Mary Manawag took over my life. It's always a call to love. For me, when you say always a call to love, an opportunity for us to love. We are given opportunity to respond to that call. To call to love. In whatever profession you are into, whatever lifestyle you have, you are called to love. A pilgrimage is an important part of the spiritual life for Catholics. They see life itself as a journey coming from God and returning to God. The pilgrim to Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag seeks to separate himself or herself temporarily from the everyday concerns of the world, thinking of spending time in the presence of the Virgin. Once at the shrine, the devout traveler finds special moments of feeling closer to God. Sinabi ng, sinabi ng taping ko ng, ng trabaho ko na, ay 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. on the set. Ibig sabihin, gumigising na ako ng 4.30, tapos naliligo na ako, maalis na ako ng 5 o'clock for work, you know? So bakit hindi mo kaya ibigay yun sa Diyos? So parang Sunday, first thing that you will do, pagising mo, maligo ka, and then, punta ka sa church or mag-pray ka. Kasi hindi naman, siya, hindi naman siya kaibahan sa trabaho. Kasama siya ng buhay mo. Kaya ka, pa, kumbaga, yung buhay ko, kahit na six days akong nag-work, six days ng 24 hours, kailangan ganun din yung gagawin ko for my God. Yung funeral mas palaging may part doon na palaging minimension. At the end of our earthly pilgrimage. So, parang kung hindi ka aware na yung our whole journey of faith is a pilgrimage. We see it's it's a journey to God. So, yung yung exercise ng practice ng pilgrimage uh, na highlight niya yung dimension ng faith natin na ganon. Na we are on a journey. No, that we are all of us are in search or going on our way back to God. Kaya nga pagdating sa funeral, mas binimension yun at the end of our earthly pilgrimage. Yan, sabi niya. Parang sinasabi doon, actually, life is not ended. Life is transformed. Mga ganyan. So, nasa consciousness talaga ng simbahan, yung whole idea of pilgrimage. Yes, we are on our way to God. We are on a journey. So, we don't expect life to be perfect. In the journey, may inconveniences. A lot of things can happen. Parang that prepares us for any eventualities in life. At the same time, we never lose sight of where we are going. Kasi pilgrimage talaga is a spiritual activity. Eh. It's a religious activity. It directs our journey to God. Yung ug ugnayin natin kay Mary, Mary must lead us to action. <laughs> so, maganda yun na may Mary action. Pag, halimbawa, devotion natin kay Mary, dasal na tayo ng dasal ng Hail Mary, dasal-dasal na tayo ng Rosario, pahid-pahid na tayo. Wala naman tayong action sa para sa mga, mga kapatid natin mahihirap. So, wala naman tayong mga ibang personal lang. Kaya selfish yun, di ba? So, dapat may, may reaction, may relasyon. So, may, may relasyon, may, 
May may action. Let's not stop being de- at being devotional. Devotional ka nga ng devotional. Emotional ka ng emotional. But your real life, you don't change. You don't become a better person. So what's that? Mama Mary leads us to herself so that we become better persons. Better citizens of this country. Better citizens of this world. And of course, better Christians. So our devotion should lead to life, actual life and love in our lives. The Virgin of Manawa is not only enshrined in her altar, but she also has a pedestal in the hearts of the people. She is not only the Apo Baket to the townsfolk of Manawa, but a mother to all. She is not distant, but occupies a place in the daily existence of her believers. She listens to prayers of pleas and devotion. And, as Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, she calls to her children like a nurturing mother. Come on, come. 